Well, hi there, food friends. It's Kevin, and welcome to Cavalcade of Food. And you're back with me in the Cavalcade Cookbook Library. Uh, and we're continuing our little series here on classic American cookbooks. And uh, we've done Better Homes and Gardens. We've done Betty Crocker. And I've had a few people ask me to talk a little bit about the joy of cooking. And I don't have every edition, uh, including uh, the very early edition, which came out in 1931. So again, like Better Homes and Gardens, which came out in 1930, the joy of cooking has been around for a long time. And uh, the woman who uh, wrote the book, Irma Rombauer, she actually wrote the book as a way of kind of supporting herself and her family. Uh, she was a widow, it was during the Depression. Uh, times were really tough. And so she um, wrote a cookbook, The Joy of Cooking, and uh, it took a long time to find someone to publish it. There's a whole story very interesting behind uh, the book and, and uh, Mrs. Rumbauer. Uh, but um, over the years, uh, it has become one of those kind of staples uh, with regards to American cookbooks and books that you find in so many kitchens and a book that people might get when they're starting out on their own, when they're learning to cook. So let's look at a couple of them. I have two identical books here. Uh, both of these are from 1943. So uh, this is sort of what I call the, the clean copy. Uh, it's uh, The binding is sort of getting loose on it. Um, but this is the uh, early, an early example of the Joy of Cooking cover um, from that period. And uh, if we look inside, uh, I think in terms of its publication, uh, this was published by Bob's Merrill. And the uh, preface to the 1943 edition, it says here, uh, and it's a note from Irma Rombauer, um, I'll read the paragraph uh, near the bottom. It says, when the revision of this book was begun a year ago, we had no intimation that international obligations would lead our land of plenty to ration cards. Now it goes to print with a number of emergency chapters added, written to meet the difficulties that beset the present day cook. So uh, we were at war during World War II when this edition came out. And like so many American cookbooks, there were sort of editions that were published during the, this year that sort of helped people deal with rationing. Uh, meat was rationed, sugar was rationed, uh, butter, uh, all kinds of things, flour, all kinds of things were rationed because uh, it was very um, necessary to send as much food and reserve as much of the nation's harvest for uh, our servicemen and women fighting in the Pacific and in Europe. But what I love about this uh, chapter, or this, this edition, the, this particular one that I have, is in the back here there are some blank pages. Uh, and these pages were, there's probably 10 blank pages, and these were not just arbitrary pages that were added, but, and I don't know if you can see it, but, because it's very faint, but there are recipes written back here in pencil. Uh, 
uh, which I love. One for a salad dressing cake. Uh, so that looks like that was a cake that was made with Miracle Whip salad dressing. Uh, another one for almond sticks, plum dumplings, uh, fluffy frosting. So whoever owned this book in 1943 added some recipes of their own to it, and that really makes it special. The other thing about Joy of Cooking that was different uh, in its approach to teaching people how to do a recipe, where many cookbooks would start with a list of ingredients, okay, beef stew, Here's all the things that you need. This much beef, this much fat, this much potatoes, carrots, celery, whatever else might be in the recipe. Well, what made um, Joy of Cooking is they incorporated, they incorporated the ingredients with the actual um, process of going through the recipe. So in other words, you know, here's a recipe for gingerbread waffles, and it says it makes six waffles. But the recipe is as follows. It says sift one and a half cups of bread flour, re-sift with one teaspoon ginger, half a teaspoon salt, one teaspoon soda, one teaspoon baking powder, quarter teaspoon cinnamon, Beat in a separate bowl until light, three eggs. Add and beat, a cup of a quarter cup of sugar, half a cup of molasses, and so on. So it didn't just give you a list of ingredients up front. It started with the very first step. So depending on how you were trained to read a recipe like I was, in books like Betty Crocker or Better Homes and Gardens or many others, you had your list of ingredients up front. So the first thing you do is assemble those ingredients. Here you've got to kind of read through the recipe to make sure that you see what all the ingredients are and then go ahead and assemble them. But they're just it's just not a laundry list of ingredients. But it forces you to read through the recipe. And as someone who's looked at a lot of recipes and I have learned the hard way. I always read the recipe two or three times going through it before I actually start working. Um, just so I know in my mind, I have a clear picture of what the process, what the mechanics are to preparing that recipe. So, 1943 edition. By coincidence, I have two. Uh, and here's another 1943 edition. Um, and I don't know if you can see this, but this actually has scribbling on the front cover. And at the very top, it says Sue, 1943, uh, Graham Tilly, Chocolate Angel Food, page 530. Uh, and this book. Uh, is got all kinds of, let's see if I can find, um, so here, all kinds of things written in the margins. And I love this book um, because of that. And uh, it gives silky applesauce. Um, she's got stuff underlined. She's got all kinds of other little notes throughout this whole thing. And let me see if her name is in here. Uh, this cookbook was owned by a woman named June Meyer. And June Meyer was the sister of our kindergarten teacher, uh, Marianne and I, and actually our two brothers, we all had the same kindergarten teacher who we loved. Her name was Nina Hyde. June Mayer was her sister. Um, and this was her cookbook. And uh, Mrs. Hyde lived to be 105 years old. And we actually were at her 100th birthday party and saw her many times after that. So 
um, a, a beautiful thing. So anyways, that's the 1943 edition of The Joy of Cooking. Then here is one from 1951. You can see the size of the book pretty much stayed the same. Did these have a paper jacket at one time? Yes, they did. Uh, where that paper jacket is, it's long gone. Um, here, it's just $2.92. That's what I paid for it at a thrift store. But um, anyways, the uh, one thing that Irma Rombauer did, of course, with each subsequent edition is she revised it. She updated recipes. Uh, so as an example, this edition from 1951 wouldn't, one wouldn't have anything about, you know, recipes using low amounts of sugar or, or things like that as the ones during wartime did. Those, that would be gone from this, but there would be new recipes added and perhaps some recipes deleted. Uh, but she really spent a lot of time, this was her book, and she spent a lot of time, uh, her and then subsequent to her, her daughter, um, Marion Rombauer Becker um, revising new editions of this book. So this is a 1951 edition. Now the book gets enlarged and you can see it is physically larger. The pages are larger. It's about as thick as it was before in terms of um, a page count. Looks like a little over about a thousand and ten pages. Oh, this one has a little sticker back here. You can't see it, I'm sure, but it says Hudson's Bookshop, Detroit. That's wonderful. I just noticed that. J.L. Hudson's was Detroit's greatest department store downtown. Um, and so they had a big book department there. Uh, but this one. In terms of pages, it has, uh, again, a, a few less, 850 pages, but the pages themselves are bigger, and I will tell you the font is smaller. So uh, this is the 1964 printing. Someone's got a little cheat sheet in here on roasting the turkey. How about that? Always good to have. Um, but there's a lot of wonderful recipes in here, and if you learn to cook using Joy of Cooking, or if it's just a cookbook that has long been in your repertoire, and you have some favorite recipes from Joy of Cooking, please share them with me. Uh, so here, we're in 1964. Here, we move into the 1970s. This is 1975. Again, Look, it got a little bigger still. Um, I will say this edition, I believe, was the first one that had the page ribbon installed so that you could mark uh, recipes with the ribbon. And you could, you know, kind of a built-in bookmark. Um, and here you see it on this 1975 edition. And, of course, again, this has got updated... I believe uh, it's still said by Irma S. Rombauer and Miriam Beckham Rombauer. I believe Miss Irma Rombauer passed away in the early 60s, but her name stayed on the book and her daughter uh, did the editing and the updating. Uh, and again, it's um, uh, so many wonderful um recipes here and I just happened to open up to the fish chapter so there are recipes in here that maybe you wouldn't necessarily see in some of the other books like Betty Crocker or Better Homes and Gardens Filet of Sole Florentine um, Swordfish Steaks um, let's see Braised Frog Legs uh, was a popular dish uh, actually at one time actually there's there's three different recipes for frog legs so I always thought that the joy of cooking had maybe uh, I don't want to say sophisticated but they had a 
different kind of recipe, say, than some of the um, cook other general cookbooks uh, that we were used to seeing. Uh, and, you know, the filet of sole Florentine, which sounds really good to me, talks about, you know, adding cream spinach and making seasoned wine sauce and uh, just wonderful things here. Uh, uh, burgundy sauce or sauce bourguignon, almond butter, um, polonaise or brown butter crumb sauce, uh, tomatoes creole. Just if, if you haven't looked at Joy of Cooking for a long time, you should because it really has a lot of wonderful recipes. Um, and it has probably more sort of what I would call international recipes than, say, a Betty Crocker or Good Housekeeping or, or, or one of those. Uh, so uh, it also came out in a soft cover edition. This is also from 1975, but you can see it is soft bound and lays flat. It has a kind of a, one of those plastic comb bindings to it. Very nice. Um, and let's see. I'll try to keep my chronology here. And then here is the, the latest hardcover edition I have. This one came out in 2006, so it's already, gosh, 17 years old. Uh, hard to believe. But this was the 75th anniversary edition of Joy of Cooking. Um, and again, Irma Rombauer, her name is first, still on the book. Uh, Marion Be Rombauer Becker, and then Ethan Becker, who Ethan Becker would be Irma Rombauer's grandson. So three generations have been editing and updating this book uh, and keeping it in the family. Has the red ribbon, uh, book ribbon, page ribbon, bookmark. But of course, this one, uh, this book in particular, uh, is uh, very updated with so many uh, new recipes, uh, but also a few in here that have been in since day one, and uh, they've updated things uh, when it comes to ingredients because uh, a lot of the things that used to be used in 1931 we don't use so much anymore. Uh, when it comes to cooking or baking. But anyways, this also has all kinds of nutrition information and, and health information and uh, things on kitchen equipment, uh, stuff that obviously the earlier editions don't have. Um, and so this is the 75th anniversary edition from 2006. And not unlike all the other cookbooks, uh, get in here. Joy came out with a, a paperback edition, um, but in two volumes. And so these were sold. Um, I don't know if these were sold together or not. They should have been, uh, but perhaps not. Each are $1.95. So again, if you couldn't, if you couldn't spend, you know, the whatever it was, $15 or $20 on the hardcover, you could buy this one. And it looks like this is, when was this printed? 74. Okay, so still these are almost 50 years old. So, um, But volume one has uh, main course dishes, and volume two has appetizers, desserts, and baked goods. Kind of handy. I actually have a whole collection of paperback additions to standard hardcover cookbooks because I always thought it was fascinating and interesting how they really made these books accessible. Of course, it was all about publishing and selling books. I understand that, but it was nice that if you wanted to have a, a pretty good, robust cookbook library, you could do so on a budget if you went with the paperback edition. So 
Joya Cooking, for those who were interested in, in hearing more and seeing some of the editions of that classic cookbook here in the Cavalcade Library. Um, we'll keep on going uh, as long as you are all interested in hearing more. If there is a cookbook that you are familiar with, uh, I might have it here in the library. I don't have every one, but I have quite a few. And I'm happy to talk about those and share them with you. So thank you for spending some time with me as we looked at different iterations of the joy of cooking. And uh, don't forget, the website is cavalcadafood.com. And please subscribe, share, like if you're so inclined. And I just appreciate your time. And I will look forward to seeing you again back here real soon on Cavalcade of Food. Bye, everybody.